this is where it, it turns and, and gets really bad. There's, there's big boulders in the road and lots of loose rocks. And it's like, what do I do? Do I go up the loose rocks or do I go up these boulders and, and hope that my tire just grabs a hold of something and pushes me through? Same thing you did. I never did that. I was on the ground. <laughs> That's exactly how I look. Ay, ay, ay. running into more and more spots where it's it's really steep and rocky like this big rocks you can't really go over you have to go around and you what's funny is I'll sit down at the bottom and go okay there's the line that I want to take I'm gonna stay on this side I'm gonna cut over there around that big boulder and then I get on the bike and hit the gas all that goes out the window Times that, Gary. Five. Uh, I lost track. Four or five. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> zero. Just found a little sign here. I believe it says we have 9.5 kilometers to go, and right now we're at an altitude of 2,356 meters above sea level. This is pretty cool. Um, we're about five kilometers from the top of Volcan Baru and there, it, it's so wet so often up here that the trees are just covered with, with their own little ecosystem. They've got, there's plants and moss and looks like they're, uh, it looks like they're giant chia pets almost. I wanna get some little scissors and give them a haircut. Not long after I stopped to film the fuzzy trees, Gary came walking up the trail. He explained his bike was losing power because of the altitude and the steep sections of the road were becoming impossible. Because he wasn't prepared to spend the night on top, he decided to turn back now rather than risk being caught in the dark. Had Gary ridden just 10 minutes more, 
he could have looked down into the crater of the dormant volcano. Our group of three had now fallen to one, and I continued on alone. Next time on Half Throttle. We knew this would be a real adventure. And every adventure, the man should have the greatest teeth and keep going.